So we're going to be building this 20S14P battery pack out of Samsung 30Q cells. This is a 72 volt, 42 amp power battery pack. It's capable of 220 amps continuous discharge with a peak discharge of 300 amps, which is BMS limited. And fully charged, you'll be capable of 25 kilowatts of peak power. The whole thing is built out of these modular groups of 14 cells in parallel. And the cell holders are custom designed and 3D printed to be more compact and save a little weight. Design credit goes to Lottie Yankmanek, who has a YouTube channel. I'll put a link in the description. The original design was for 12 cells in parallel, so I modified it for 14. I'll put a link to the SDL file in the description as well. So here I am putting these parallel groups together. Keep in mind that before I did this, I made sure that each one of the cells were within a few hundredths of a volt of each other. This is important because as soon as you connect them in parallel, the cells will begin to charge each other and equalize in voltage. And any sufficiently large difference in voltage between two cells might result in a charging current that exceeds what the cell is specified to handle. I'm also adding these insulator rings to the positive terminals of each cell. And this is technically an optional step, but it does help mitigate the risk of an internal short. And with a battery this large and expensive, it's a good idea to take every precaution. I'm using the K-Weld DIY spot welder to spot weld a nickel strip. I tried a number of spot welders before and K-Weld is definitely the best, although it does have some drawbacks that I'll mention a bit later. So this is a chart describing the minimum amount of nickel strip needed for a given amount of current. You can neglect the length of the nickel strip because it's so short and offers little resistance, so it's only the cross-sectional area that's significant. If you check the math between the two highlighted columns, you'll find that you need a minimum of 0.15 square millimeters of nickel strip per amp that it's going to be carried. Since we're designing for 220 amps max continuous discharge, that current will be distributed over 14 connections in the parallel groups, which means that we have to plan for 15 amps of current per connection. And since I'm using 0.2 by 6 millimeter pure nickel strip, that means we're going to need at least two nickel strips per connection. But wait, the series connections will have to handle the entire 220 amp load. And since this design results in seven series connections between parallel groups, we would need to stack four nickel strips on top of each other for each one of those connections. And that's just too much spot welding. So what we're going to do instead is pick up some of this 0.2 millimeter thick copper plating and use that for the series connections, which will also reinforce our parallel connections, such that we don't need multiple layers of nickel strip anywhere. So here I am spot welding this single layer of nickel strip, and I mentioned that the K-Weld spot welder had some drawbacks. Well, one of them is that if you're spot welding pretty continuously, the electrodes tend to get really hot. I covered mine with a couple of layers of electrical tape, but even then you'll see that I'm putting the electrodes down every few spot welds to let them cool off. So here I'm connecting all the parallel groups together in series using the copper plating. It's nearly impossible to spot weld copper because of its very low resistance. So I'll be soldering the copper onto the nickel strip. I'm also using extra flux on the solder points to help with faster adhesion of the solder, which will minimize the amount of time the cells are exposed to high heat. Now we're going to fold these 5S groups in line so that we could stack them on top of one another to make the complete battery pack.
I also added some heat resistant foam as padding between each parallel group to better align the module and also prevent the groups from knocking into one another when they're inside the pack. I think this would help with any possible wear mechanically, but it also prevents uneven distributions in the flow of current as two groups randomly touch and create a connection. One issue I found with this design is the folding over of copper plates at the series connections creates these jagged protrusions that need to be accounted for to reduce the risk of a short. I covered them up with electrical tape and adhesive fish paper, but later I found that they needed even more wrapping with electrical tape and heat resistant foam to be sufficiently mitigated against. So here I'm stacking the 5S modules on top of one another, keeping track of the orientation and adding heat resistant foam in between. I tried using some of this heat resistant glue as well, but I found that it wasn't really necessary and just kind of made things messy. The modules are mainly held together mechanically with Kapton tape, which is a heat resistant type of tape with good tensile strength. And here's the entire battery pack before each of the 5S modules are connected electrically. And now it's time to connect the 5S modules in series using the same copper plates from before. Next we'll be setting up the BMS. This is the Ant BMS 20S model with 300 amps maximum discharge current. It came with two temperature sensors, an on off switch, and an LCD screen, but I won't be using the LCD screen. The first step is to connect the balance wires. I left a notch of nickel strip at the end of each parallel group for this purpose. Here they are folded over the cell holders on the 5S blocks. Here I'm just measuring out the length of each balance wire. Then I'm trimming and soldering them to the notches of nickel strip. Then I'm checking that I didn't make any mistakes and each one of the balance wires is connected to the right parallel group. I'm doing this by connecting the negative probe of a multimeter to the negative terminal of the battery and using the positive probe to test the voltage of each one of the balance wires at the connector. If all the balance wires are connected correctly, you should see the voltage increase by about 3.7 volts for each successive group in series. Next we'll connect the temperature sensors. There's two of them and they connect to the BMS like this. You should place the temperature sensors directly on the cells of the pack. You can use heat resistant glue to attach them and they should be placed somewhere on opposite sides of the pack to get a more or less average sample of the temperature. Next we're going to make the main discharge connector. I'm using an EC8 connector, which is rated for up to 190 amps continuous. I know we're designing for 220 amps continuous for this pack, but this battery is for an e-bike with a 200 amp controller. So in reality, we're only going to be hitting those 200 amps when we're doing heavy acceleration. I also have this 4 into 1 setup going through a butt connector on the positive side. This is because the BMS is designed with four 12 gauge wires for the B- and C- leads and I wanted to stay consistent on the positive discharge connector so as not to create any bottlenecks or imbalances in the flow of current. I'm not really sure if this is necessary but it just made sense to me. So here I'm just attaching the buck connector to the C- lead of the BMS so that I can attach the negative terminal of the discharge connector to it later.
And now it's finally time to connect the BMS. I'm just using hot glue to physically attach the BMS to the battery pack. And here I'm soldering the B minus leads to the negative terminal of the battery. I later did the same thing for the positive terminal, but I didn't record that part. Now I can connect the balance wires. Note that for most BMSs, you want to connect the B minus leads before you connect the balance wires. Otherwise, you get some low voltage readings and sometimes it doesn't work. And here's the almost finished pack with BMS connected and heat resistant foam on the positive and negative terminals. The two small red and black wires coming out of the front of the pack, that's the on off switch for the BMS. If you short those wires for a few seconds, the BMS will turn on, although it can only be turned off using the app. I later added a small push button switch between these two wires as a hard on switch but I've never actually found myself using it. I also wrapped the rest of the pack in heat resistant foam using hot glue and electrical tape for extra padding. And here comes the fun part, wrapping it in shrink wrap. This is the absolute biggest shrink wrap I could find. I think it's like 400 millimeters. And that's it, that's the complete pack. I hope you guys enjoyed it and please like and subscribe, I'll be posting more videos in the future.